Right, there we go, we switched recording on. Okay, uh, question 13. These are nearly always, this type of question is nearly always towards the end of the paper, and it's a normal distribution question, and it tells you it's a normal distribution question. Right, there are two things we do on a normal distribution question. First, we write the distribution algebraically speaking we use mathematical notation to do it and we draw a sketch and these are the things I want you to see you doing um, on normal distribution questions uh, it's going to get to the point where I, I kind of stop I say okay I'm not I'm, I'm not going to do you know help you with normal distribution questions if you're not um, doing this work because if you do this then um, it makes the question so much easier. So in this case, write the distribution. Well, we can call our variable x. Um, x is the um, the time that they took to complete the maths test. It's distributed normally. We need to know the mean, which is 53, and the standard deviation is 16.3. And it's a curious quirk that we have to give what's called the variance. So we have to put 16.3 squared. So that is the distribution. These are the two key points. This is the mean. Sorry, my writing's gone to pot now. Uh, and this is sigma squared. So um, those are the things that you um, need to know. Let's tidy those up a little bit. Um, okay, mean and standard deviation squared. Right, draw a sketch. Okay, I gave you printed copies of these. Um, you can look back on the statistical applications part of uh, the Google Classroom if you need them. We know that that's 16.3 and we know that that's um, the mean is 53. Okay, right. Um, these are the things you should be doing to help you answer these questions. People who do these find the questions much easier. People who don't do them find them difficult. So if you're asking for help with a normal distribution question, I would expect to see this normal distribution sketch and the information written on it. Find the probability that an applicant took at least 40 minutes to complete the test. Well, if 53 is here, then 40 is going to be down here somewhere. And we want the probability that they took at least 40 minutes. So we are looking at this part here. Okay, and that's the probability we're looking at. So we're going to, on your GDC, you're going to go to the stats mode. You're going to look at distribution. You're going to look at normal. I can't remember which function buttons these are, and you want N, C, D, normal distribution. And that's what you want. For your settings on your calculator, your lower will be 40, because that's the bottom of the interval. The upper, what we do for the upper bound is we do the mean plus 10 lots of the standard deviation. So that's what I'd expect you to enter for your upper bound. So that's 53 plus 10 times 16.3 and you can actually type that into calculator you don't need to type you don't need to work that out and then type it out 10 times 16.3 i'm hoping most of you can work out is 163 you can just type in 53 plus 163 if you want and that's an upper bound why do you do that well some people worry that they don't know what the upper bound is so they type in a really big number um you don't need to go to a huge number but then people who think oh yeah i don't need to go really big but how big is really big and it's very difficult to have an awareness of that so the a good rule is if you do 10 lots of the standard deviation above the mean 10 lots of the standard deviation below the mean you've got 99.9999999 some more nines percent of the data you're going to be right to three significant figures you've got plenty of the data there why do we choose 10 you could have done it with probably seven or eight would have been enough even five times the standard deviation would have been enough we choose 10 because it's a nice easy number to remember and multiplying by 10 is really easy so you can do it very easily in your head so that's why we go with 10 um is there a danger of doing a much bigger number what's wrong with typing all those nines in um nothing particularly it just might take you longer to type in lots of nines and it might take the calculator slightly longer to process it um it will get by if you can't remember that. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so um, that's that's part A. Uh, you find the probability that will you'll do that on the calculator. Part B. Um, another question. So let's again do a sketch. Okay, standard deviation sixteen point three, mean fifty three, and our normal distribution curve and it says 11% of the applicants it took longer than k minutes to complete the test well 
where's k going on this graph we don't know where k goes on this graph what we do know is the graph is symmetrical so there's 50 percent on the left hand side of the mean and 50 percent on the right hand side or above the mean now if we know it's only 11 percent who took longer 11 percent we're looking at the the longest 11 percent well we know that 11 percent is going to be somewhere down here okay so we've got this region here so that is 11 percent or 0 0.11 okay exactly the same approach we go to stats mode we go to distribution, we go to normal, but this time we go to inv normal, okay, inverse normal. Um, this is your area, okay, the area is the percentage we're looking for, it's the same as the shaded area on the diagram, and it's a right tail because um, the area we're looking at is at the right hand side of the graph so that's the settings for that this is a classic normal distribution question that always always comes like this I've, I've I don't think I've ever seen a normal distribution question that doesn't do this the first part of the question tells you a value on the x-axis and asks you to find a probability the second part of the question tells you a probability and asks you to find the value on the x-axis they always do that one uses uh, NCD and one uses INVN and they will almost always be in that order as well because NCD is considered more straightforward so you'll do that one first. Uh, INVN where you're doing it inverse, you're doing it back to front will come second. So that's, that's what to look for in a normal distribution question. Write the distribution down, draw the sketch and expect that to come up. Okay, uh, the next one, there were 400 applicants for the job estimate the number of applicants who completed the test in less than 25 minutes um, now this is quite a nasty question actually see because it, it requires you to do another calculation so normally they would use a value you've already got but you actually need to do another normal distribution calculation so we need to do another sketch um, mu is 43 uh, how many completed in less than 25 minutes so here's 25 okay um here's your value um and you want to know what this area is so again you've got the value on the x-axis okay and it tells you um so so it tells you that so you're on an this is an ncd question because you know the value on the x-axis and you work out that probability. Now the probabilities can be used as relative frequencies as well. So if we know that the probability is say 20%, it's not 20%, then the probability of that happening is 0 0.2 or 20%, then we know that 20% of those applicants um, are likely to have taken less than 25 minutes. So we then find 20% of um, whatever 40 is. So we've, we find this area or this probability of oh, sorry 400 not 40 um, and then we we have to do the area as a decimal times 400 okay and that gives us the answer so we're looking at this we're looking at this as a percentage of the 400 applicants so this is going to be given as a decimal which is effectively convert to a percentage it's a percentage of treating this as 100 we need to treat it as 400 because we've got 400 applicants for the job now I haven't actually seen the answer for B um, to work out for C but it wouldn't surprise me at all if there is a connection here between K and 25 25 is 28 below the mean it wouldn't at all surprise me if K is 28 above the mean it wouldn't surprise me if K was 81 because then you're using the symmetry of the graph you know that that's 0 0.81 and so that's 0 0.81 but I don't know if that's the case because I haven't seen the answers but that would be a typical normal distribution question if it happened okay any questions about question 13 it would be nice if you could just type note in the comments box thank you Yasmin again and thank you Afton uh, just so that I know people are listening and I'm not just talking into uh, when the mark scheme says it means award oh, mark. Uh, Adrian can you I haven't got the mark scheme open and switching between it's quite difficult at the moment um, can you put your microphone on and tell me which question it's just read out where it is on the mark scheme for that um, no uh, that's for question 12 I was just wondering okay uh, let me just pause the recording on this and I'll go back to question 12. Okay. <laughs> 